What are the purposes of the interviews? To find out more about teachers and students, background, reported behavior, opinions, feelings and attitudes about various aspects of language learning. Answers, however, indicate only what participants say they do rather than what they actually do. What kind of interview can the researcher conduct? There are three main types of interviews. The informal conversational interview. Different questions are asked for each person being interviewed. The same person is interviewed on several occasions. The length of the interview is completely open-ended. Such conversations are informal interruption that have no particular agenda because these conversations do have a purpose and they are very unstructured. Advantages The interviewer can be very responsive to individual respondents and deal with topics as they arise in the conversation. The disadvantages It is difficult to collect the systematic information. Different questions will generate different answers. It is more difficult to find patterns in the data gathered. When might this type of interview be used in second language research? In case study. For example, if researchers want to find out why particular students are having a great deal of difficulty in class, they might undertake a series of interviews with these students over the course of the semester to find out what linguistic factors and non-linguistic factors are contributing to the learner's difficulty in acquiring English. The second type of interview is a general interview guide approach. In this kind of interview, the interviewer designs a series of questions to ask each participant in order to make certain that the same topics are covered with everyone. The order of the questions and the phrasing of the question can differ, but the same information is asked of everyone. The advantage of this type of interview The same content is covered with each participant, which makes it easier to compile the data. The disadvantage of this type of interview. The interviewer does not pursue topics that develop from the answers that participants give to particular questions. The third type of interview is a standardized open-ended interview. These interviews are highly structured because the exact wording and order of the questions are specified. Although there is no flexibility in the format of the interview, it does assure that all the respondents are asked identical questions. Such interviews are valuable because all of the data gathered are comparable and the data analysis process easier. If the researcher wants to find out the particular information from all of the students, they have a basis on which to compare the student's language learning experience. Typically, such interviews involve from 6 to 8 participants with similar background who are asked to respond to a series of questions. During the interview, teachers and students get to hear what others have to say on the topic and to offer their own views. The gathering is not an open discussion or problem-solving session. It is instead an interview in which teachers and students ask a series of perspective questions. The advantage of this type of interview The researcher can obtain a good deal of information in a short time. 
the teachers and students involved in the session may appreciate having the opportunity to share their views on particular topics. The disadvantage. Each teacher or student has less opportunity to offer his or her opinion. It is difficult to know if a respondent is led to answer in a certain way in order to fit into the group. The primary danger in conducting such sessions is that one or more participants will dominate the interview. The problem can be avoided if the interviewer manages the interview and encourages everyone to contribute to the session. The success of the interview is related to the wording of the questions. To begin, the interviewers may ask truly open-ended questions that allow the participants to respond on their own terms. For example, if a teacher is asked, how satisfied are you with this textbook? The response will be phrased in terms of satisfaction. However, if the question is phrased as, what do you think of the textbook? teacher can discuss any aspect of the book that he or she believes is important. The researcher shouldn't use yes-no questions because they do not allow participants to elaborate on their response. It is best to avoid questions that deal with more than one idea, such as what do you think of the program and how would you improve it? With language learners, it is important to phrase the question at a linguistic level that the students can process and to be sensitive to cultural differences. Power relationships One of the most problematic aspects of the teachers conducting interviews is that teachers are in a position of power. Here, the participants do not have the same rights. The interviewer has more power than the interviewee. The interviewer and the interviewee will affect the content of their interview as well as the language which is used. How the researchers minimize these bias? One way is to begin the interview by fully explaining this to students why they are conducting the interview what will be done with the information and what are the benefits for students. Researchers can provide feedback and reinforcement throughout the interview, offering students words of thanks, praise, and support. There are two ways to read interview data. One is the vertical reading in which what participants say during an interview is seen as reliable. Second is what is said in an interview is more about the participant's relationship to the topic being discussed and the social context of the interview than the topic itself. For example, what is said during the teacher-conducted interview on grades may be largely a factor of the relationship between teachers and students because students may believe that what they say will affect their grades. So, how to record interviews? There are two ways to record interviews, tape recording and note taking. The advantage of tape recording, it preserves the actual language that is used. Note taking allows to record the central facts of an issue in an interview. It is far easier to analyze the data summarized in notes than what is provided in the transcript. Analyzing interview data case versus cross case analysis the first decision that needs to be made in analyzing interview data is to decide whether to begin with a case analysis or cross case analysis case analysis means writing a case study for each person that was interviewed this approach would be appropriate if you wish to highlight the individuals involved in your study in the manner in which they differ. Cross-case analysis involves organizing the responses of several interviewees according to the topic raised in the interview. 
This approach would be appropriate if you wish to highlight particular aspects of your research topic.